Hey, what's up everyone? So in this video, we are going to go over Docker Compose. And Docker Compose is one of the best ways that you can make a multi-container application using a single YAML file. I believe the best way for us to learn this is to just hop into the terminal and get going. So please join me. All right, so we're in the terminal here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and install Docker Compose. If you don't already have Docker installed, you'll need to install docker.io first. Uh, if you need a run through for that, please check out one of my earlier videos. But in this video, we'll be installing Docker Compose. So I have the command up here, and it's apt-get install docker compose, and I have the dash y to automatically accept any prompts that come up. And it uh, looks like I already have docker compose installed. So let's go ahead and check out which version I have. So to check out the version of Docker Compose I have, I'll just do a sudo docker compose version. And we can see this is the version that I have running. Just make sure if you're following along to have a similar version or a newer version than this one. So I'm going to create a couple of aliases here just to make my life a little bit easier and I don't have to type out sudo each time. So my first alias is going to be alias docker compose and that's going to be equal to sudo docker compose. And now if I just run docker compose version I can confirm that that runs perfectly and I don't need to include the sudo. Also I'm going to create another alias and just call it dc and I'll make it the same here, sudo docker compose. And now I sort of have a shortcut here for docker compose and I just type dc version and I have all my docker compose commands available to me by just typing dc. Alright, so the next thing is we should go over all the docker compose commands available to us. So we'll just type docker compose and you can see all the commands here and you can see that they're very similar to the commands that are available when you just type in docker so the two tools are very related um, you can see here like it has the build tool we got stop and start um, up and then there's a few new ones like uh, scale and this allows us to scale the amount of uh, containers for a specific service. So let's go ahead and run one of these. Let's do docker compose images and see what we get. So we can see an error here. And the error we're getting is you can't find a suitable configuration file in this directory or the parent. Are you in the right directory? And then you can see that it's looking for these two files. This is because docker Compose uses these Docker Compose YAML files to look at the services and build up services and maintain the services. So let's go ahead and create one of these Docker Compose files. Um, let me get into a directory here. I'm going to go into uh, the Vagrant folder. And I have a directory here, Lab7 Docker Compose. So I'll go in here and I will build the Docker Compose file. You can, if you're following along with this video, go ahead and just make a new directory and uh, start building from that directory. All right, so I'm in Visual Studio Code here and I'm gonna create three new files. I'm gonna create a Python file to run our application. I'm gonna create a Docker file to create an image and run a container off of. And then I'm gonna create a Docker Compose file which is going to maintain our entire application. All right, so I'll right click here and I'm gonna go new file and I'll call the first one app.py. This is gonna be our Python Flask web server. Then I'm gonna create another one called docker file. This is gonna be the file that we build the image and our containers run off of. And then I'm gonna create another file called docker compose. Dot yaml and this is going to be the file that docker compose uses to build the service so we'll first start in the app.py and I'm gonna copy and paste a flask application here this is all available in my github in the description below but basically you can see here that it's running uh, Python script and it's 
importing the Flask module and it's running a basic web server that's going to return hello world and give a hit count for the amount of times that web server has seen traffic. So perfect. That's everything we need for app.py. I'll close this out. The next thing we want to do is we want to get into the Docker file and we want to start building a Docker image. So I'm also going to copy and paste the code I have ready for that here. Um, in my previous video, I went completely over the Docker file and all the different options you can use. So if you want to learn more about the Docker file, please check out that video. But just to give a quick summary, you can see that it's using the Alpine image. This is similar to the Ubuntu image. It's just a different flavor of Linux. It's very lightweight. Um, the next line is it's just saying go to this working directory of slash code set these environment variables and then it's copying over some files it's doing some installation and then it's doing flask run so it's quick and easy get the flask web server up and running perfect so the next thing we're gonna do is get into the meat and potatoes and go over docker compose and let's build the docker compose file together all right, so the first line of any docker compose yaml file should be the version. So we're going to put version 3. And this is just the version for yaml file formatting that docker compose is expecting. So keep keep version 3 in there for yours as well. No matter what docker compose version you're using, it'll keep everything consistent with this lab. Um, the next line we want to do is we want to define our services. So our application is actually going to have two services. The first one is going to be web, and this is going to host our Flask application. And then we're going to have another service called Redis, and this is going to do the counter function of our Flask application. And I'll go over that a little bit more when we look at the app.py file again. Uh, there's a couple things I left out. So let's get this Docker compose file created first. So, under our services, we want to give our service a name, and the first service we're going to create is the web service. So we'll go web, colon, and then on the new line, we want to feed our web service some parameters. The first thing you usually do is give it an image name, but we don't have an image ready for this one yet. We want to build our own image using that Docker file. So, we're going to say build, and where do we want to build the image from? We want to build it from our current working directory because this is where we have our Docker file. So basically this is telling uh, Docker Compose to create a web service named web and uh, it's going to build, use an image that it builds using this Docker file right here and everything in this Docker file will be run. Perfect. So we're building an image. Next thing we want to do is since it's a web application we want to expose some ports so we can reach it on the network. So we'll just do that with the ports, colon, and under a new line, we'll just go 5000 to 5000. So it's mapping uh, the local port 5000 to the container port 5000. And that's all we need for the web service. The next thing we're going to do is the Redis service. So we'll call it Redis. And we're actually not going to build an image, but we're going to pull one directly from Docker Hub. And the name is Redis colon Alpine. And this is all we need for now for our Docker file to get our initial application running. So you can see the two services are going to be web and Redis. And I don't think I mentioned it previously, but in the app.py, um, that Redis service is actually going to be used for that hit counter. So you can see in here, it's ca it's got this cache parameter, and it's doing the host Redis on that port. So so the two hosts are working together. This is a multi-container application where both containers need to be up for it to be functional. Um, one more po portion that I have not mentioned here is we actually need a requirements.txt file. Uh, this is very common for any Python application. So make sure in your directory you have a requirements.txt and you just need these two lines of code. We have flask 
and we have redis and in our docker file you can see that it's referencing this requirements dot text file because it's trying to run it it's doing run pip install dash r requirements dot text this is telling python the modules that it needs to get started all right so let's hop into the command line and get this application started all right so we can see that it's going through the steps the first thing it's doing is it's building the image for web. All right, so it looks like web the web service has been built, the image has been built, uh, and now it's doing the Redis service. And while I was talking, it looks like both of the services are up. So you can see that uh, Redis is up and web is up, and it's doing some logging as well. I'm going to open up another terminal and we're going to try to access this service and I'll keep this one up just so we can see the logs roll. Alright, so I have a second terminal open here. Now I'm in the directory that uh, my Docker Compose is in as well. I'm going to run a few Docker Compose commands before we do the curl. Uh, so the first one I'll do is Docker Compose and I will say images and we want to spell docker compose correctly so we'll do that and then we can see yes it found both of those images redis and then the one that it created which is just the directory name and it put web under it um, we didn't specify a name so it gave its own name uh, the next thing we want to check is docker compose ps and this will show us the running containers and we can see that we have two containers up we have this one and then the web one and we can see which ports they're listening on so this one's listening on port 6379 and then this one's listening on port 5000 and we actually map this one to the local host so if i do a curl local host and then specify the port of 5000 we can see hello world I have been seen two times. Now it's saying two times because I've actually tested this before I started recording just to make sure everything's working. But this counter is working. If I go again, you see three times, four times. And if I hop back over to my other terminal here, we can see that the server is getting all the requests there. So everything's being logged. Docker Compose is logging everything. If I had this open on this terminal and I wanted to see the logs I would just do docker compose logs and hit enter and since it's in the working directory of the docker compose yaml file it knows to search for these services so we get all that perfect I'm gonna clear the screen another great feature of using docker compose is having the ability to scale out on demand so we have two services running. We have the web service and then we have the redis service. If we wanted to scale out the redis service, we could do that with one simple command and that would be docker compose scale. And then uh, we want to name the instance. So the container name is redis. And then we just go equals and how many containers we want. So we started at one. If we wanted to scale up to four containers, we just hit in four. And you can see that it's building those four containers. All right, those four containers look like they're up. Now if we do docker compose ps, we should see all those containers running now. All right, so the output here has shown that we've scaled up. We can see that the redis container now has four instances. All right, and just an explanation for these other containers that exited out. I actually tried to scale up the web service first, but I was getting errors, and the errors I was getting had to do with only one container could listen in on this port and IP address mapping. Uh, you could get past this by doing multiple web servers and having a load balancer in front of it, but I didn't want to complicate this more than it should be. 
Basically, I just wanted to show that you can easily scale up a service in Docker. Anyways, that's all I want to show in regards to Docker Compose today. It's a very powerful tool. You can build all your container applications within Docker Compose, have them scale up. You can use any of the features that we talked about. You can use volumes, you can use networks. Just go onto the Docker website, have a look at uh, the syntax and everything. It's very easy once you have a look at another example file to know how you can massage that file to get your application working. I suggest you take one of the applications we worked on before and uh, create a Docker Compose, bring one of those guys up. Anyways, that's all I want to show today in regards to Docker Compose. If you have any questions, please leave them below. In our next video, we're going to get into Docker Swarm, which is Docker's default orchestrator. And if you don't know what an orchestrator is, please join me in the next video because there's a lot to learn. Um, orchestrators are very important to know in the DevOps world. Docker Swarm is the default orchestrator for Docker. It's similar to uh, Kubernetes, if you've heard it. I know Kubernetes is very popular. Kubernetes is made by Google, and it's their container orchestrator platform. So I think it'll be good for everyone to learn Docker Swarm. It'll be a short video, and you'll, you'll know how to get right in there. And uh, I'll also have videos in regards to Kubernetes in the future, if you want to check those out. Anyways, I hope to see everyone in the next video.